segment, I want to get into multimeters. It's something that we should have gotten into a long time ago, but it only came up recently in chat. In front of me, I have my three primary multimeters. This is a fairly old one. I honestly don't know how old this one is. It's probably as old as I am, but it works. It works well. This is a little pocket multimeter, and this is the one I pretty much use from everyday to day use. Now, when buying a multimeter, the first thing you need to ask yourself is what kind of electronics will you, be, you personally be dealing with? Will you be dealing with uh, AC, DC? Are you going to be dealing with more with uh, digital electronics? Or are you going to be doing with high voltage? What are you going to be doing with your projects? Now, these three meters all have benefits and drawbacks, and I'll get into them one at a time. Now, let's uh, frame up, zoom in, and look at this little pocket multimeter that I got for Radio Shack. It costs about 20 bucks. Uh, fits in your pocket. It's a pretty good multimeter, but there are some flaws. So here we have my little pocket multimeter. Now it has AC voltage up to 500 volts. I wouldn't trust it anything past 60 volts, to be honest, because these leads that, that are on it, these little thin little leads, I don't think it handle too much voltage or amperage. Now it has DC amperage up to 200 milliamps. Now, you have to remember that standard AA batteries will be 300 to be between 300 and 330 milliamps, which means this thing can't even measure the current coming off of AA batteries. One major downfall of this tiny little meter. It has a diode check, which could also be used for continuity check. Continuity check, always useful. It does ohms from 200 ohms, 2 kilo ohms, 20 kilo ohms, 200 kilo ohms, and 2 mega ohms. Now, this is not an auto-ranging multimeter, meaning you have to physically move this dial to its maximum range. So if we wanted to test a 5 kilo ohm resistor, you can't put it to the 2 kilo ohm setting because 2 kilo is going to be the lowest, uh, sorry, the highest setting you can measure. So we've got to put it on the 20K. Uh, let's say we wanted to measure 120 volts AC. AC voltage being up here, we're going to put this on the 200 volt setting. Now if you notice, the display only has three readable digits meaning the precision to this isn't really going to be all too precise because it only has these three digits. So if we're measuring, say, 120 volts, and you know it'll be 1, 2, 0, but what happens if there's a half of a volt or a ninth of a volt? All of that's going to be cut off because the display can only display three digits. Now, for a little pocket multimeter, it's really nice. It can handle up to, uh, they say, 500 volts AC and DC. It runs off of an N-cell battery, which unfortunately get kind of expensive, and I think that's a bit of a drawback. Um, it fits in my pocket. The amperage is a bit on the low side, but for general electronics use, it's okay. I think I paid about 15, 20 bucks for it. Definitely good for a first-time starter project. The probes on it are fairly nice. They actually have um, little uh, grip stops, so you can't go too far, and they have really sharp points, which are actually very important when dealing with fine precision electronics. If we're doing any kind of surface mount work, you don't want to have a dull tip. I've actually known people uh, to go as far as quite literally sharpening their tips with a Dremel. It's also got these little notches in it. I don't know if you can notice it, but they have these little notches right here. So if you need to butt up against any kind of uh, component, a leg or a wire, it'll actually sit in there quite nicely and it'll actually catch. Here we have a relatively ancient multimeter. I do not know where this thing came up from. I, it's probably as old as I am, if not older. Um, it's got a four-digit display. It's relatively nice. Granted, it's old. It's still usable. Now, it does actually have an auto and a manual ranging system, meaning if I put it on auto ranging, when I take the probes and I put it on a component, it'll sit there and go through the range of values until it automatically selects the proper one. Or you can go to the manual setting and go through the typical settings as you normally would. Now, the drawback to auto range is it takes a little while for the meter itself to get an accurate reading. Of course, again, this is being a, only a three to four digit display. It's not going to be super accurate. Now, if you notice down here, we've actually got probes. Yes, probes are fun. These are called banana jacks. They're actually fairly, fairly common. They're easy to get your hands on. Um, they work. They do their job. Now, if you notice, we've got four ports down here. This one in the middle is called common or common ground. So we're typically going to keep our our negative probe or our, our black lead plugged into this one and this one is going to test our voltage, ohms, and diode check. Now it's all clearly labeled. You probably can't see this after the encoder of the video but it actually is labeled. And it also tries to warn you down here that this, should, this port should not go over 1000 volts DC or 750 volts AC. These two ports here, this is a 10 amp line meaning 
if I wanted to test something that was 10 amps, I'd plug into that one right over there. Now, if I wanted to test anything between milliamps and microamps, I would plug in over here. If I wanted to do anything about up to 1,000 volts, you go into this one. Now, one cool thing about this meter is it actually has an audible alert for the diode check, for continuity check. So, these are just two alligator probes, and you know, it might seem like a really stupid function, but when you're trying to go through a whole bunch of continuity checks on a circuit board, not having to look at your multimeter every two seconds to see if you actually have continuity, big plus. And this meter has it. Um, the other little meter I just showed does not have that, so you have to keep looking at your meter. Plus the fact that it actually has removable, removable probes is extremely useful because your probes will eventually wear down or perhaps you want to buy a new set that are more tailored to a job. Probably next episode we'll get into uh, homemade surface mount probes. We'll see where the show leads us. Now, as usual, this multimeter has uh, DC voltage, AC voltage, uh, AC amperage, DC amperage, as well as uh, resistance checks, all the common functions, as well as diode and continuity check. So, um, I honestly don't know how much this meter cost. Um, don't know where I got it. It just wound up in my bin one day. It works very well. Goes to show that you do not need a $400 meter to go and do, do any kind of electronics. You could probably find something like this for about $20 or $30 used on eBay. Now, one thing I didn't mention, though, is um, behind the battery pack in this meter, let's see if I can get to it, okay, runs off of two standard AA cells. Right here and right here are fuses. Now, these are actually put in place just in case you decide to go over 1,000 volts or, you know, uh, over 10 amps. Instead of blowing up your meter, you'll only blow a fuse. So, you just replace the fuses, very common part. You probably pull them out of a, a whole bunch of devices, uh, old wall warts, old power supplies, etc., etc., or you can go to your parts surplus store and get a replacement set. So, you know, old, but still useful. Here we have my primary multimeter. It has all of the typical functions. AC voltage, DC voltage, current, um, resistance, but this also has capacitance, diode check, as well as audible alert, logic, and uh, basic frequency counter. Now, this actually uses a different type of banana jack. These are called shrouded banana jacks. The reason they have shrouds over it is this multimeter is actually somewhat smart. It can actually detect which port I plug these into. So these shrouds will physically hit sensors that are in these ports. Now, just like the other multimeter, um, it does have fuses in it. This has a 10 amp max on this port, 500 volt max on this port, and this port is pretty much everything else. Now, this multimeter also comes with a transistor check. Now I do a lot of digital electronics, I do a lot of stuff with transistors and whatnot, so having a transistor check for me is actually very useful. Now um, this can actually also do temperature. Now this multimeter is kind of cool because it actually is a bit more modern. You, you can actually hit the shift function and it'll actually alternate. Now if you notice there's going to be gray text on the bottom and uh, yellow text on the top and it's just like the FN key on a laptop so when you go into that secondary function it'll actually shift. So this can either be voltage or temperature in Celsius or Fahrenheit. This can be analog voltage or it can be decibels. Uh, we can do microamps and milliamps, uh, milliamps, full amps, uh, resistors, diodes, sorry, resistors, capacitors, uh, continuity, diodes, logic, frequency, transistor. Now, it also actually has a, a really cool feature called the hold button. So if you're doing anything with frequency or you need to go and measure something, you can hit the hold button and it'll actually lock the value. Now, if you also notice, it's got a nice four-digit display. It's got this really nice rubberized, uh, you know, body condom. So I've actually dropped this thing from quite a height, and it's actually taken quite a bit of a beating. Um, it also has a serial port. Now, this is not an absolute nece uh, necessity. I actually like it a lot. The PC side software, Windows only. I do believe there is a homebrew Linux software, but I haven't used it. Will allow me to have more precise measurements. So instead of actually having four digits, I can have six, seven, or eight digits on my actual readings, so I can get a lot more precise. It also allows me to have a rudimentary oscilloscope function, so I can physically see waveforms. It also allows me to log components, so instead of writing down in a composition notebook what resistor one through nine is, I can quite literally go into the software, go into the, the actual log file, and label them. Um, not totally needed, but if you're really going to get into hardcore electronics, like me, 
you might want to get something. Now, your multimeter will be a long-term investment. If you treat it proper and you do not abuse it, it will last you longer than your kneecaps. As you saw from the last multimeter that I showcased, that multimeter is very, very old. Works brand new, no problems with it whatsoever. Now, as always, you want to try to keep your probes clean, you want to keep them sharp, you want to keep them tidy. You do not want to use them as tools, you do not want to pry things apart with them. And if you are going to go look for a multimeter, make sure you have the basic functions. AC and DC voltage, uh, capacitance, optional, but I like, for me, that's a must. Resistance, current, continuity, and make sure your probes are removable. Make sure that the, uh, the meter itself is fused. That way, if you accidentally have it on the wrong setting, there have been times where I have lent my meter to my friends, they have put it on the wrong setting, decided to go and test a wet cell battery or something of the such, and fried my fucking meter. Fuses are your friend. Before we get into how to use a multimeter, I want to show you a little bit about probes. Now, I've got three primary probes here. These are typical probe pens, as they're called. They just have simple little needle point to them. A lot of times, they'll have a little notch in it, so when you actually swipe it across a component, it will actually lock in instead of just sliding off. Um, they also have nice grip stops. They're very inexpensive. Just make sure that the probes that you have, if you're buying new probes or replacement, that you actually read the manual to your meter and you get the ones with the proper, uh, the proper backing to them. So in this case, we've got the shrouded banana jacks. This next one is just typical standard alligator clips. These will not handle a lot of current or voltage, but if you just need to clamp down with something, it works just, just fine. Um, these are the ones that have standard banana jacks. Now these standard banana jacks will actually fit inside of the shrouded banana jacks. However, I have to manually select the function in which port I'm going to be on, so watch out for that. These over here are actually called test clips. Now, I'll try to get a nice shot of it, but if you notice, it's got these little, little clampy pieces. So you can quite literally clamp onto something, and it will hold on and stay there. This is really good if you're doing things with logic, transistors, or just a component that's going to change in, in value a lot, like a potentiometer or a variable capacitor or even a power supply that's, that's getting too much uh, drain from it. Um, these are actually intended primarily for oscilloscopes, but you can, this actually has a BNC connector in it. You can get them in uh, different variants for whatever meter, or you can just cut the cable and splice in some uh, shrouded uh, banana jacks or banana jacks, or whatever the hell your meter has. All right, so that's a bit about probes. Let's get into how to use a multimeter. All right, I got some random junk here. I got a battery and a couple of boards. We got my meter. We're going to go through a couple of the functions on how to properly use your multimeter. Now, first we're going to do voltage. Voltage is pretty straightforward. Now, notice my meter is kind of wavering around a little bit. It's just picking up uh, ambient voltage. So what you can do is you put the meters together, uh, put your probes together like that, and it'll zero out your display. All right, so if you're wondering if your meter is just kind of screwy or whatnot, what have you, you can always cross your leads together, it will should zero out. Now this is set to the auto range function, and that's really what's causing this to kind of go haywire because it's, it's trying to auto range. Now of course we have a battery here, it's a wet cell, it should be uh, 12 volts, 7 amps, and we're going to put the positive wire to the positive lead and the negative wire to the negative lead, and the meter is set to DC voltage. This is coming up as 10.66 volts. Now if you put this in backwards, of course it's going to come up as negative. 10.66 volts, so you don't have to worry about actually putting your probes in backwards. It will not harm any meter that I know of. Okay, now if you wanted to measure an actual AC waveform, uh, like a wall outlet or what have you, you just simply go to the AC. But we're not going to do that for today because I don't feel like dragging all my crap to an outlet. Now, when you're testing amperage, I can't show you how to test amperage. Whatever you do, whenever you're testing amperage, do not plug directly into the battery or your power source or whatever you